one of the things that has been very vocal around is like the sentiment of like, is Tanache underrated? Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'd be curious to know your take on that subject matter. Yeah. Well, I know it comes from a genuine place, so I appreciate when people say that. I don't like to to view myself as like a, mm-hmm. a sad story. Mm-hmm. Like I I view myself as a success, not an underrated, yeah. not not like you know someone who all you know yeah. does did not reach the success you deserve. Like, but I don't know. It's such a nuanced conversation, but yeah. I just don't embody that energy. All right, y'all make some noise. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's right, y'all make some noise. We got Tanisha in the building. Oh. You know? Ooh. How you doing? I you feel I good? The, I shifted the whole couch. It's the energy. You got you got that energy. <laughs> I like it. Well. We're happy you're here. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, how was that VMA experience? You know, you're, you're fresh fresh from that. Um, the VMAs are it? fun. Yeah, y'all yeah, make some noise. The VMAs are always a good time. Yeah. It's like, to me, it's the most fun award show. That's a statement. It is. <laughs> it is. But like, which one's which one's better? Hey, hey, hey. The Grammys? I'm, I'm, hey. <laughs> they're, they're all serious. They're all they're they're very serious. But I, serious. no, I do love the the energy of the VMAs. Like the VMAs it, has like iconic moments. Yes, it also feels like a little messy. mischievous. Yeah, like a little messy. You know, you got like you got range. You got from like Britney Spears at the Snake <laughs> to like Miley Cyrus twerking. You know, there's just range. There's like, range. I love the VMAs. You love the VMAs. Yeah. Tell me about the the outfit choice. I, I, the internet <laughs> is talking about the outfit choice. You know what's really funny? I the outfit choice like came together like two hours before the show. <laughs> I didn't even like tell anyone this. I had this other outfit that I was gonna wear. And then basically the morning of the show, of I saw someone else wearing that same dress the night before. And I was like, <gasps> You're like, can't do it. Pivot, pivot. <laughs> so yeah, so we just like went into the city and we went to like Bergdorf and then we didn't find anything. So then we're like, it's okay. So we went to Saks and tried on a bunch of stuff and that dress was just like perfection. It's the one. This is achieving everything that, you know, I came I set out to achieve. <laughs> Tell me, so how long did it take to find the dress before or the outfit before? Um, we'd done well, we'd done like some fittings like the yeah. week previously, and we'd gotten it tailored, the whole thing. Like, I got my nails done to match. It was a whole thing. And then we're like, oh, like, new, yeah. dress. Yeah. It a new dress. It it's was funny fun, how though. it works that way. Like it was the fun, stuff though. that happens last minute ends up being you know, the I right felt, choice. I, I was saying, I was like, I feel alive. I thrive under mm. pressure a little bit. It helps you focus. I kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, you've had a lot of, like, high-pressure moments, and yeah. we'll get to, to some of those moments for sure. It makes good memories. <laughs> that for sure, yeah. Tell me about, speaking of memories, take me back a little bit, right? Because mm-hmm. your family moved to, to L.A. Mm-hmm. In, in a way to help push your career and, and, and help put you in the right positions. What do you remember about, about that moving? period? Yeah. I mean, I was really young, but I already had these, like, crazy, crazy big goals. Mm. And... I think the biggest thing that I remember about being young was that all my goals felt so, so very tangible. Like, really? They did, yeah, they didn't feel difficult to achieve or like far off. I think some like childish, yeah. childlike naivete, you know, just which is like, amazing. Which is amazing, and I think that honestly, for me, it was it was a big part of a. I think how I like manifested my career mm-hmm. because I just had this kind of very just unshakable mm-hmm. self-assurance from a very young age. Mm-hmm. And also probably what convinced my parents to support my career because, you know, since yeah. I was very, very young, this was always just such a passion of mine. It felt like hmm. a no-brainer. What made you feel or like, was it like your family or support system? Where did that confidence come from where yeah. you just were like, no, this is what I'm doing. It's just very yeah. normal to you. Yeah. You know, you know, even the way you see it now, you're like, yeah, yeah it's just what I was going to yeah. do. <laughs> I mean, I think my parents really nurtured that support mm. system. So I give them a lot of credit for that because they never told me, like, this is a bad idea mm. or no, this mm. is unrealistic. They just always supported my dreams from time and said, yeah, if that's what you want to do. Then, like, sure, absolutely, you'll do that. You'll be that. That's and amazing. I think that that cultivated this yeah, this crazy sense of confidence from, mm. a, from a very young age. 
I mean, to make it in this industry, you, you need that confidence. You really do. There's so much. It's 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 wild, and I didn't really start experiencing that kind of self doubt and stuff until I obviously like was in the thick of it and being in the industry, and then for the first time looking at myself and my career and my life and being like, whoa, <laughs> this isn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I think just the fact that I even was given so many opportunities was because I it started with a, a foundation of confidence. Wow. Take me into like some of the sacrifices that came with that, right? For for the family, right? Because I imagine like everybody's got lives you oh, know, yeah. prior to and then, you know, your parents are people too, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. What did it feel like when you were like hitting these milestones professionally? Mm -hmm. um, what did that mean to to you and the family? I mean, it was a big deal for me because I think even at a young age, without it being something that my parents like put pressure on me directly, I still felt that there was a sense of pressure only because I knew that we were financially unstable. I knew that uh, the core of like my fa my parents' siblings and mm. their parents all lived in the Midwest. So yeah. they, they didn't have the, the support system mm. or even like the same opportunities mm. that, you know, I did growing up here in LA. Yeah. And so I think it was really, there was just an awareness that I, you know, my continued success is kind of what's going to keep us living here. And yeah. like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of pressure. I was going to say, that's a lot of a pressure. a lot of pressure. It didn't feel like a negative amount of pressure, though, for me, because I, again, I had this like crazy confidence. So I was yeah. like, it's fine. I got this. It's like, like, it's I got whatever. this. It's written. <laughs> yeah, it's written. And I do think that that, um, yeah, it helped us. It helped me and us as a family to get through some like crazy times financially mm -hmm. and like almost losing the house or things like that and really brought um, my focus at a young age to my business and to my work, mm -hmm. which also gave me some level of advantage because like when kids were all in school and like worried about yeah. prom and homecoming and cheerleading and whatever, like I liked those things, but I also was like... I got the other focuses, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to go on tour. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to get in the studio. And, and so I think it just, it, it made me lock in hmm. at a really young age. Because I definitely saw the sacrifices my parents made, yeah. like getting extra jobs, hmm. leaving obviously their family and friends. Hmm. Me, you know, sacrificing free time after school yeah, to like go to auditions. Like, <laughs> how does that, you know, when you think about your childhood or yeah. even now right because yeah. like you can reflect right we can look back hindsight mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about it now do you miss like some of those things you're like i kind of want to go no. to prom or i had my prom on the on the on you know some of these runways or red yeah, carpets honestly no <laughs> i never really felt like i missed out even though you know there's experiences that i didn't have i felt like i was doing what i really wanted to do so i mm -hmm. never felt that sense of like ah. Oh. i missed something i didn't go to college like i wanted to be doing what i was doing already so yeah, it was a blessing. Yeah. As things started to progress and mm -hmm. momentum, um, did you feel like people started to change in regards of how they interacted with you or approached um, you or Yeah. I think I've I've seen a lot of the ebbs and flows of how people have interacted with me over the years. <laughs> it's been very interesting. Like when I first first started pursuing my career when I was young before I was successful at all, mm -hmm. like in like middle school, it wasn't really elementary, more so around middle school. Yeah. Like people weren't, they weren't messing with me. They were mm -hmm. like, mm, mm, lame, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's off doing this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Like there, there was a big disconnect between me and my peers. Because at that time, were you still, you were very focused at that time? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. And I already, <laughs> and I already always was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. And they're probably like, she's weird. Like. <laughs> We're just in eighth grade. Like, what are you talking about? But um, yeah, so that, I, I definitely felt like a big disconnect from my mm. peers. And then I kind of got in the music industry and then I saw how people shifted their dynamic because I out the gate had like a really big hit. Yeah. And so then I would see people like, now all of a sudden I'm cool. Now all <laughs> of a like, sudden, now, now now all they sudden talk I'm to cool. You. And I'm like, okay, that's really interesting. Like everybody thinks, oh, she's new, she's fresh, she's hot. People want to talk to you, people want to, mm. you know, they're interested yeah, in you yeah, yeah. they want brand you new. to be on song or they want you to be a part of this exactly whatever. yeah then it changes again hmm. you know then there's another shift like once once you're established then there's a period where people kind of they test you they kind of want to see what hmm. you're made of they hmm. you know they, they, there's like a, a sophomore slump or like hmm. you know kind of you you initially get on and then they're like okay well what's next hmm. and that's when you know it's easy for hmm. 
the doubt to seep in, the yeah. pressure to seep in, all of the extra things that go with, you know, mm. being in the music industry start Because you're no longer so focused on just you. And it's just not pure anymore. Like, before mm. you get in the music industry, you can just, you have a very pure idea of, like, this is how it's going to go. Mm. This is the type of music I want to make. This is who I am. And then as you're further along in it, people have their perceptions of what you should mm. be, their idea of what you should mm. make. Um, the perceptions of the media, the perceptions of your own team. Mm. There's just so, so many more opinions and energies going into your work yeah. than ever before. Right, right. So <laughs> that, so then it shifts a little bit again, and then mm. people are kind of like, mm, not giving you as easy. It's not as easy. It's not anymore. as easy as when you were first coming through. Right, through the when door. you're brand new. Yeah. How did you deal with these constraints that you're starting to you were starting to face in that period, right? Mm -hmm. Like in that mm -hmm. era of mm -hmm. your your career, you're coming in, you know, you're starting to kind of see it beyond, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, what you would see the it as. Rose-colored glasses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're like, how do I navigate that? So I'm curious if you yeah. could bring us in a little bit. To that. Um, it definitely was a learning experience for me. I don't think I really saw those challenges coming until they felt like real challenge, like until I felt like it started to affect like my mental health or mm -hmm. like my own perception of myself as a creative. Yeah. And I was like, wait, this is like, hold on, like let me stop and kind of reevaluate what's really important to me. Yeah. And at a core, what's most important to me is obviously the art itself mm -hmm. and being able to stay true to why I am involved in music which is to make great music yeah. and to just kind of try to which this is also an act of practice this doesn't just happen with one decision you practice um separating yourself from those hmm. perceptions and hmm. and you know not being so attached to people's <laughs> you know what what people think of you yeah. or um people's idea of what you should or shouldn't do and then mm -hmm. you kind of get back to a core hmm. of instinct and of gut and like that's really what I had to do over the next few years. Wow. Was there a period or like a specific moment where you you recognize like hey like I I feel like I'm not really in control of yeah. this in the way that I want. Yeah. Yeah. What was yeah. what was that? I had an album that I wanted to put out around 2015. It was my was it my second album? It was my, it was my second album. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was when I first started having, like, disagreements with my label um, in terms of which singles to put out and, like, how to roll it out. And I was already of the mind that, like, we just got to drop, we got to move, like, we got to put this to go. out. Yeah, let's go. I've been working on this album for one year, two years, three years. Then it became four years. Oh. And then I was just, because, you know, uh, historically, Major labels like to put out an album after, you know, you've had a hit or two so they can guarantee the financial cool. success. Yes, absolutely. So we put out a few singles and none of them like really stuck. And so I was in this kind of gray area where I mm. wasn't able to release my album. And I felt like for mm. the first time, this sucks. This yeah. isn't fun anymore. Mm. And that's when I started thinking about all those things and really mm. reevaluating. Well, one of the the reevaluating you did was you you went independent, and there's a yeah. you know this four year chunk where mm -hmm. you're completely independent, you're free from the label. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that experience impact impacts you right now? Like, how yeah. do you think that impacts you when you step into yeah. the rollout and you think about the music or the singles you want to release? Like, how does that impact you? I think, I think going independent was like one of the best decisions I ever made. Mm. I think it changed the trajectory of my career. It re it gave me the opportunity to find that courage again and mm. that um belief in myself and knowing that my opinion mm. was the right opinion. Yeah. When it comes to my art. When it comes to my art. Maybe I'm not always right when it comes to like business and other things. <laughs> but when it comes to my art, when it comes to your art, it has to come from it you. It has to come from you period. And um, so I do think that over the next four years, just recultivating that mm. has made my art so much better. Mm. I think that the music I'm making now 
feels so much more inspired to me. And that's really exciting. I think the fans could tell the difference. <laughs> so I'm just in a really, really, really great place, a much better place. Yeah. And I have to imagine, like, there's a there's a different level of maturity, too, well, right? Like, too. If there's, like, this whole of gap, course. you know, and then, you know, yeah. you, you had the delay, and then you took time away. Mm -hmm. um, and you had the chance to kind of just focus on, like, yeah. what you wanted to become. And I'm just growing up, too, you know? You have to, you have to consider that as well. You just experience. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. teaches you a lot. <laughs> it does. It does. Experiences, mm -hmm. and it's the best teacher. Absolutely. Right? Like, you, you got to go through it. You have to. You know, there's no other way. We, we talked a little about, about the independence, but I also want to talk to you about community and, mm -hmm. and family, right? Mm -hmm. And you have such this large community here um, in L.A. And, and worldwide, but I, I specifically wanted to know, how does it impact you from a creative process standpoint yeah. and when you're trying to work on a new album? Yeah, you know what? I was just thinking about this the other day. I feel like my community is one of my superpowers mm. in the sense that I, there are, I'm lucky enough to have people that I, truly genuinely trust and I think that you know people can say you know they trust the people around them or their family or their friends but there's a different level to the people that I surround myself with in terms of like trust mm. and I think that that opens you up to it gives you a again a foundation to be able to try anything because you know that you're always safe yeah. at a core level so mm. yeah I've got a great community of yeah, fans great. friends family yeah. team how have you gone about kind of cultivating that inner layer, right? Because yeah. that, I think that's the layer that's most important to help you feel safe, especially when you might be exploring a new sound mm -hmm. or you might, you know, be exploring a new part of you that has nothing to do of with course, you as an yeah. artist, you mm -hmm. know? How do you shape that? I mean, I think it's about um, having discernment. I mean, mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't always know. <laughs> I think um, you build trust and you have discernment when it comes to meeting people and who you let into your circle. You can't just let anyone into your circle. Mm -hmm. But I'm also really lucky when it comes to I've just I have a really solid family unit, which mm -hmm. I think is like the, the core of that foundation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, longtime friends and people mm -hmm. have been around me for a long time. That's the other thing. I'm a very like loyal person. So <laughs> if you've been around me for a while, then it's like you put in the time. Then, you know. You're like, you my people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you're saying I got no shot of being in the front circle? No. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it takes some time. Just, you know, we got we to gotta start somewhere. You want, you want the outer perimeter now, and then, you know, we'll, we'll work our just, way in. I'm just trying to get tickets when, when the tour gets announced. That's all. <laughs> I'm just, you know. All right, I, got, I got you there. I got you there. <laughs> Uh, speaking speaking of performance mm -hmm. and, uh, and and your approach in, in a general, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about you know you you identify you know you're out queer woman, and when I think about performing in pride, um, how do you approach that? Is that yeah. something you like are extremely proud of, and it just like you don't even think about it? It's just yeah. like pride how you is show so up. fun. Pride yeah. is super fun. Pride's one of the best shows to perform just because I feel like it already has this energy of like exuberance and freedom, like. Already, the yeah. audience is already celebrating. Mm -hmm. So to be able to perform at a celebration is always, hmm. it's just like the icing on the cake, you know? Yeah, yeah it's so fun. How did it measure up that first time? Oh, it, pff, great. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I did a, like a few this year, which was really amazing yeah. too. So just to see how far I've come, even since my first Pride, to then like now, it's real, real fun. Yeah. I, I mean, the community has been, the LGBTQIA plus community has mm -hmm. been very, dedicated community of support for me so yeah it's been great and you can feel it i think that's the difference when you're like you're in person versus like online but you're oh yeah you can feel that energy mm -hmm. right and i, I feel like There's it just takes you a different place like that energy exchange when mm -hmm. you're on stage and, and and people are in the audience and they're giving you their energy and you're giving them all your energy <laughs> and you guys are just kind of it's this this direct exchange you see it happening right there and it's just amazing there's yeah. nothing like it God. talk to me about um some of the things you have to deal with, you know, we talked about the the stage and we talked about the performance, but, you know, I feel like there's also this aspect as being a star of your level, you have to deal with this online oh, yeah. scenario and mm -hmm. this environment. Um, and you've mentioned that sometimes that that relationship can be toxic. Yeah. Um, how do you kind of deal with that? I think that's also a practice. It's a skill that you have to continue to cultivate. Mm -hmm. I think when I was younger, I was much more vulnerable to things people would say online. You took it personal. Oh yeah, 
For sure. <laughs> People are very, very mean and very cutthroat oh, yeah. online. Behind, behind the keyboards? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, as I've matured, I'm not sure if it's just because I'm older or if this is because I've just gotten a thicker skin over the years of seeing that kind of negativity. You do begin to develop a thicker skin. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there's all, also some days where you are just in your feelings. Like maybe I'm when I'm really tired, I'm so much more, like, sensitive. So if I go online, like, in, in the airport at like 3 a.m. or something, I'm like as tired as hell. Like <laughs> someone like will say some shit, and I'll be like, "Ah, oh, that one really got me." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think that's also like a practice of um, knowing when to step away, hmm. knowing when to log off. Yeah. <laughs> knowing... I mean, how do you like resist the urge to like practice? Respond. You just though, have to practice. You know? Because it's have 3 a.m. You're tired. I know. And sometimes you do, and then you're like, nah, 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 nah. Let yeah, me not. Yeah, yeah not you just it. have to practice. It's really just practice. Because I think it's human nature mm. to want to fight back, especially when you're triggered. Yeah. Um, but then also, you know, we all know this. This is easier said than done. But, you know, you truly don't want to give energy. The more energy you give to negativity, mm. the more you cultivate negativity. Mm. The more, if you start co responding to hate comments, more people will leave hate comments because they'll think you might respond. Or, you know, it just, it, you real you start to notice if you block someone they'll start posting oh my god she blocked me like you just <laughs> eventually get to the point where you're like actually let me not even give them that much clout that much, yeah. to respond or to block hmm. or anything and then once you really really take seriously the fact that you don't want to give that energy then it gives you you know freedom to kind of just let it go yeah makes it easier I mean, it's crazy to me when people know that you block them or that you unfollowed them oh my god and then they're That's like bananas. happy yeah, I'm like, why do you know? They, and they'll be happy too. They'll be like, yes, I got her. <laughs> I really got her this yeah, time. I gave them that energy. I shouldn't even touch it. Yeah, so just ignore them. Just ignore Literally that. just ignore them. <laughs> What's been some of your more positive experiences with social? You know, because I feel yeah. like it's also like a huge way to connect with mm -hmm. your audience. Mm -hmm. It's a huge way to release things, mm -hmm. test stuff out. I mean, my biggest... Plus, the biggest thing that I've gained from social media is just literally being able to release my music mm. um, on a DIY scale. <laughs> like, I was putting stuff out. It was in, it was in the blog era, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. So we were just kind of putting things out, definitely not papered and not legally um but that but that was like it was it was amazing yeah i mean it's just you don't have to it it's amazing. that freedom that's creative it's, freedom absolutely have. and and nowadays you know um maybe you can't put out like a whole album that way but you still have so many opportunities in order to connect with people and to be able to create your art in mm -hmm. a diy sense whether it's um just creating fan bases yeah. whether it's just you know, making music videos online. You can you can produce online now. You can you know record a full album on an iPhone. You know, there's there's yeah. just no limits. You can record a movie on an iPhone. There's no limit to what my nieces do that. Yeah, of <laughs> course, I'm sure they do. And so I think just being able to have the space and the ability to be seen hmm. is it's unprecedented. You know, people didn't have that kind of access in the past. No way. You only had one one way yeah, to Yeah, there were gatekeepers go. and yes. you absolutely could not mm -hmm. even be a part of the conversation. And to be fair, those gatekeepers still exist. Yeah. Um, that's still definitely there's a big barrier for mm. entry when it comes to, you know, operating at like the highest level. Mm. You but, feel like you're impacted by it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. However, it's not impossible and there is still ways to have amazing careers and visibility without said gatekeepers. Hmm. Hmm. Good to know. Yeah. I'm glad that you've been able to figure out your ways to, to yeah. navigate and maneuver, yeah. right? Because, yeah. I don't know, I, I, I hear from artists and just this conversation around just feeling like, you know, being boxed in or feeling like the yeah. label, you know, I don't know what I would do if, you know, you were like three years, four years went by and you couldn't release this yeah. this body of work that you felt like really represented this time and period yeah. of it's, your life. It's definitely frustrating, but uh, yeah, there's uh, there's plus and minuses to being with a label, right? I do give them a lot of credit for, I like I established a great career mm -hmm. having a relationship there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wouldn't, I'm not just like everyone should be independent 100% fully because there's a lot of benefits mm -hmm. from working in the, with the machine and mm -hmm. in the machine and 
there's a lot to be learned. There's a lot of great relationships you can build, like all the features and collabs and people that I was able to meet. Yeah. There's a lot. You know? So it's... You can go either way. Yeah, you What's, just have to follow your instincts. What did you feel like instincts. was significantly different on the independent side? Because mm -hmm. I, on the independent side, you describe kind of, when you're in the labels, kind of like mm -hmm. you got a lot of things kind of already in place. Yeah. But then on the independent side, I'm guessing you're putting a lot of these pieces together. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to connect all the dots. You have to, you're in charge of your marketing, your distribution, your budget in general, yeah. paying for your own funding, your music videos, your tour, your everything. Yeah. So that's a huge level of responsibility. While it gives you a huge level of independence, literally, it also is a huge level of responsibility. So that's why I, I you know, when I say independent's great, I always advise people to kind of take that with a grain of salt because it's it's hard. Yeah, you're <laughs> it's an not easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's not just the music anymore. Yeah. It's and it's not as simple everything. as even having like one viral song. Like mm. it's it takes a lot to be able to cultivate like a full career. Yeah, because you're talking year to year and you gotta to your point, you gotta look out for the ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. Like it's not always going to be up. Definitely not. You know, um, but we are on an up right now because I want to talk up. about this new album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the sixth studio studio album, mm -hmm. BB Angel. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel like it compares to other bodies of work of yours? Oh, um, I love this album. I don't like to compare bad bitches. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, <laughs> I think I have a lot of really great work um, for different reasons and different favorites for different parts of my life. Um, but I think that this really represents where I'm at right now. I'm very happy with it. Where would you say you are right now? Um, feeling just unapologetic, feeling real confident, real self-assured. Um, yeah, just, just a lot less, I don't know, feeling very solid, hmm. feeling very at peace. Yeah. Was there some work you did between here and and the, mm -hmm. and when my last album yeah yeah, well, yeah. And, and more so i'm asking because you were like you're, you're at peace mm -hmm. and you feel like mm -hmm. you're you're very solid in, mm -hmm. in who you are mm -hmm. uh, so i'm just curious like if there were things that you did behind the scenes that you were like i just wanted to like focus on me or i didn't do yeah. music for a, a period of time um i think that that just goes hand in hand with mm, like my own personal development getting older self-awareness working on myself mm -hmm. focusing on myself yeah. um focusing on my work and my business mm -hmm. yeah just letting go of a lot of the things i think that i was really like holding on to in terms of like accolades mm -hmm. or like certain things like that, grammys and stuff like the yeah exactly okay. or you know certain numbers that i want to hit things like that just not taking those things as as markers of success or like mm. a seriously or not even of, of success but like markers of like my value hmm. <laughs> as like a human yeah. <laughs> you know you're like if I don't get this like uh yeah. should I not make music right but it's I think it's just a can't. practice of I don't think I ever got to the point of not making music but I would definitely feel like well I just suck I'm gonna still make music but I'm, <laughs> I feel bad about myself though you know so yeah, yeah. I think it's just yeah it's just personal growth yeah. Personal growth. Tell me, tell me about what do you hope that others take away from this album, right? Because if for you, it's it's been able to do those things. Like, what do you hope it does, and how do you hope it shapes in the real world? Um, I hope from like a zoomed out scale that my career and my artistry and the fact that I still continue to put out the work that I do inspires people to not give up to. Mm form their own path, to be resilient, to um, make their own destiny, if yeah. you will. Um, like, just keep doing it. Just yeah. keep making things. I, I think that's important. We have to. Sometimes we, we get to. caught in, like, a period that could be difficult. Yeah, yeah. And I think every time you look back, that period ends up being very short yeah. or shorter than you thought it was when you were going through it. It's always <laughs> hard to have, you know, the right perspective when you're in it. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> when you're in it, it sucks. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's the worst. But, you know, those periods give you the opportunity to reflect, to, to work on your craft, to get better, to challenge yourself, to push yourself. Remember at the beginning of this conversation, I said, <laughs> I thrive under pressure. <laughs> yeah. That stuff, you know, it makes, it, it makes for good growth. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah. What 
Tell me why is this album only seven songs? <laughs> well, okay, so I have, this is what I think. <laughs> That's what I think. I feel like I spend so long, right? I'll spend like two years plus working on music, mm -hmm. making all this music, listening to every song day and night, you know, obsessing over minute <laughs> details, words, sounds, the order, the, the order, <laughs> the mix. Um, like all those things are so important. And then you put it out and then it's just over. And then it's gone. And then you're like, I have to do this all over again for the next two years, like, I, you know, to get back to this like new feeling. So I really wanted to in the spirit of making everyone focus hmm. on every individual piece of this project and really just marinate in the things that are important to me, I wanted to make it very succinct and I wanted to give people the opportunity to like really, really delve into this particular body of work hmm. with the hopes of being able to hopefully release more music quicker hmm instead of wait two years and put out a bigger put chunk out. of work. Yeah. So to me, that was, you know, the compromise I made with myself because I like, yeah. I like, I like new music. I like the freshness of something new coming out. Yeah. And I, I like when people too. really, you know, can sit with it, soak I mean, it in. I, you know, maybe this is me. I might be, you know, one of the Lone Rangers on this, but I, I like a seven song project. You Thank know, there's you. like, 30 song projects out and I'm like, I'm, I'm not getting through 30 songs. Sometimes sometimes 30 <laughs> is a lot in one one sitting, you know? Sometimes, I'm also a fan of being able to put on one project like I'm gonna go on a walk or I'm gonna go on a drive. Yes. And I have that from start to finish. Like I know I'm gonna get through this yes. particular vibe instead of having to break it into chunks. I can get through seven. Right. I can't get through 30. It's, 2020, <laughs> it's 2023 also like, I don't know about Java, but even like movies sometimes I'm like, that's too long. Oh, have you noticed? All <laughs> movies, a, like all movies hours, are like two and a half like hours. three now. hour movie, I'm like, no way am I watching all that. No way, like, I remember mm -mm, movies were like long. an hour and like 20 minutes. Now they just really <laughs> like long. stretching it. I'm like, everything don't need to be like, I'm like these really long. Yeah, I'm watching clip. I'm watching like 30 second clips. Like that's that's about that's the right length. <laughs> yeah. Next. <laughs> Give me the 30 second movie. Yeah. Like let's just get to the point. <laughs> well, I want to get to the point on the single needs. <laughs> yeah. You know, you 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 shot it in the grocery store. Before we get to the creative side, yeah. uh, I mean, from the visual, I do want to talk about the inspiration behind the song. Yeah. You know what what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, Needs was a very, which, you know, there were a few songs on this project that just felt like they just kind of like flowed. Hmm. Like there wasn't too much like prior thought that went into them. They were just kind of like a vibe, hmm. a mood. <laughs> um, I think Needs was one of those songs where someone had sent me the beat, maybe emailed me the beat. Hmm. I wasn't in the studio with anyone. Mm -hmm. It was just me and my engineer. And it, I, it was either that I freestyled the initial take on the mic or I freestyled the initial take in my photo booth on my computer. I can't verify which one that was. <laughs> I initially thought it was on photo booth, but I might have been in the studio. Been studio. The point is, it was an instinct, it was a vibe, and I basically came up with the exact melody and concept and we all got needs, like that part. Yeah. All like first time I listened to it. Sheesh. So I I often think that the first time you hear a beat, for me, when it comes to songwriting, the first time that I hear a beat or an instrumental or whatever, wherever I go melodically or mm. lyrically, whatever my first instinct is, is often my best idea. Mm. Like I can continue to make a lot of ideas, but I'll often return to the first one. To the one. very first, because it was yeah. the real, it was the most it's the, I don't know, it's just one. the most raw and... Yeah. Yeah, it's just, in, it's an instinct. And um, so that song was just 
It's just an instinct. It's an instinct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, okay, so now tell me about the, the, the video, right? Yeah. The video's in, in a grocery store, yeah. and, you know, you got the whole crew, and you know, going through, I see the cereal, and I see, yeah. you know, sports <laughs> drinks on the other side. Um, what, was, uh, what was the direction on that? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, the song is a very fun song, right? Yeah. So I wanted the energy of the video to be fun and lighthearted and not real music video-y, <laughs> because the other... The other thing that I wanted to do with this project was to get real real. I wanted mm -hmm. it to feel personal. I didn't want it to feel overly produced um, from like a visual perspective. Yeah. I wanted it to feel like we were doing all these things in like very mundane places yeah. with like mundane lighting and like, you know, I didn't want it to be like yellow and pink and I just didn't want it to feel yeah. extra. You know, I don't, you know what I'm trying to no, say. No, I get what you're saying. You didn't want it to take away from actually the message. I want it to feel you real want, and yeah. cinematic and Simplistic, simple like, and like very, you know, real, up close <laughs> and personal. So, yeah, so that's why I was like, okay, a grocery store is perfect because it's a very just normal location. Yeah. And in the song, I, I talk about like, my body is a buffet, and I talk about like peaches, banana. I was like, okay, well, a grocery store has peaches and bananas, <laughs> and they have a buffet because you know they have a hot bar. They and I was like, oh, I could be in the hot bar <laughs> with deli meat all over me, <laughs> and then I could be, and then that, and then those and were the ideas, and then that's just how. That's how we got here. <laughs> that's how we got here. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah. to be in these creative yeah. meetings. I love it. You're yeah. like, yeah, we said. I just be like. Meat. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I know it would be good. I know, I know. Turkey bra. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're funny. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I want to jump into a segment, if that's all right with you. Yeah. And it's called Turning Nuggets into Bars. Okay. Okay, so essentially, I'm going to give you a word or a phrase, mm -hmm. and I want you to tell us a story okay. that might be inspired by that. Okay. A real one? Um, that's up to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Okay. Um, um. <laughs> yeah, you now you're thinking about it. You're yeah, like, I'm going to give them the real. Like, I'm going to give like, <laughs> like, how much of a story? Okay. Um, talk to me nice is once, once upon a time. There, <laughs> once upon a time. There's this girl, and she was just, you know, dating around, but like not really, but <laughs> you know, just like <laughs> in theory, in theory. And then um, she started like meeting people that were interested, but like, you know, just like not like coming correct. Hmm. And so she started realizing that in order to really take anyone seriously, they had to talk to her nice. <laughs> then she wrote a song about it, and then she put it on her album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we might, have a, we might have a screenwriter wow, on you. our hands. <laughs> wow, thank you. All right, talk to me about okay. cooking. Ooh, I like to cook. Um, once upon a time, <laughs> there was me, and I used to throw these, like, crazy taco parties, mm -hmm. and I would cook for everyone, but this is the thing. It was, like, open-door policy because— Wait, 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 wait. You just letting random people come into the Taco Tuesday? Yeah, because I was just on that vibe at that time, and I was like— <laughs> Invite everybody. I'm just going to, you know, do a Dude. bunch of tequila shots and cook all night. So I would um, <laughs> I would just make like hundreds of tacos and people would come through and I would literally cook for hours and hours and hours. And I really, you know, we would get we would get really lit. I mean, so the then tequila. the next morning I would wake up to this like aftermath and. It was really fun. It was really legendary. But basically, long story short, I don't do those anymore. And people are always like, oh, my God. I, like, so many people mm -hmm. that I would never even realize. Oh, my God. I was at your taco part. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So good to see you again. Like, from people that work in the music business yeah. to, like, actual artists to, like, someone very random so you got legendary so, yeah, taco they parties? So, yeah, they were fun. So, 
real taco party. Yeah. You got to bring it back. I'm sorry. Like, I you just told us you got us hyped about it. it. I've considered it, but now thinking of all those people in my house is like. It ain't got to be your house. I know. I have to throw <laughs> it in. I, I need, I need, but I need a kitchen. We got a kitchen. Okay. Amazon Music, Amazon, you got a kitchen. Amazon, Taco What's Tuesday. Up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, now I do need to see maybe a video that also has like a, a taco situation too. Like. I probably made some. <laughs> you got to think about it. Yeah, that was a few years ago. It was pre-pandemic. Um, Grammys. Um, so wait, how does it, what kind of story am I supposed to tell you? Like a full well, story? Well, if you could take a, re a real story that um, happened from Grammys. One time... This is like <laughs> one time, one time, one time when I was before I'd ever been to the Grammys. I really wanted to go to the Grammys so bad. I'd never been to the Grammys, and um, do you guys remember Lil Twist? Do you remember oh, Lil Twist? Wow, yeah. Okay, so he was friends with like Justin Bieber, and I met him. I think on Ju okay, so I was in Justin Bieber's baby music video. Yeah. And I think I met Lil Twist, and then he invited me to go to the Grammys with him. And I was like, yes! So the first time I went to the Grammys was with Lil Twist. Yo, no, that's city. amazing. Yeah. We, that's a good story. That actually is a good story. Because we hadn't thought story. about Lil Twist in a minute, but and you I, went yeah. to Lil Twist with him. And I got my dress from like, my neighbor, like my neighbor, <laughs> like literally my, like my yeah. mom's friend had a, I didn't have any gowns. <laughs> But it was actually a really pretty dress. It was like a black. It was really chic. Now we all got to go watch the Bieber video, and we got to go <laughs> look at this Grammys moment. I don't know if there's actually Let's any evidence <laughs> of me being at the Grammys. I'm sure there is. <laughs> Maybe. Sure. You just put it in the internet. It's going to be found. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, taekwondo. I um, am a black belt in taekwondo. And yeah, that's true. And my story is, I went to the 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 California State Championship, and I got, I won a gold medal. You did. I did. So I am a go thank you, thank you, thank you. I am a California State Taekwondo champion. <laughs> Circa, I'm not sure the year. A long time ago. What's the What's the situation on the the skill set right now? Like I haven't practiced in a minute. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I Muscle feel like memory. I yeah, it's in there. So you saying I somebody tried try to step it. to you wrong? Yeah, I wouldn't You might have to it. put them on the floor. Mm, I I could break you know. I'm not trying I nothing, but stuff. I was saying if somebody else decided to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna mess with you anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, talk to me about. Um, fans and your feelings towards fans, you know? I have really great fans. You do? I'm really lucky. My fans are smart and cool and interesting <laughs> <laughs> and have great taste and, you know, they're not followers, you know, they're just, yeah, I love my fans. And they've been so dedicated to me over the years and, yeah, I'm very lucky. They're very vocal. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to you. And I think one of the things that has been very vocal around is like the sentiment of like, is Tanache underrated? Mm -hmm. And I'd be curious to know your take on that subject matter. Yeah. Well, I know it comes from a genuine place. So I appreciate when people say that. I personally don't embody the energy of being underrated. I think it's not a good perspective to have of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, although, like I said, the the... The intention is there. I, yeah, I feel like um, I don't like to to view myself as like a, mm -hmm. a sad story. Mm -hmm. Like I, I view myself as a success, not an yeah. under, not not like you know someone who all you know yeah. does did not reach the sex sex she deserves. Like, but I don't know. It's such a nuanced conversation, but yeah. I just don't embody that energy. Yeah, you don't even receive it. You're mm -hmm. like, this is I'm sure. I mean, going yeah. back to how you start, you're like you're in a place where you're very. Yeah there what advice would you have for others to, to get there that may not have come from you know as strong of a household a, as you have or, yeah. or in the place where you are now as you've been able to do mm -hmm. this work as an adult what advice would you have for us yeah i mean it it's it's definitely hard it's not an easy thing to do when it comes to having that kind of confidence and self-assurance but i think the, the biggest thing that i can advise you to do is just keep pushing kind of mm. like what i said before when it comes to just don't stop 
Like, don't allow your fears to get the best of you. Yeah. Continue to make art. Continue to put yourself out there. Continue to, um, you know, let your story unfold mm -hmm. and let the universe, you know, take you on the ride. Mm -hmm. But the but the but the biggest thing is don't stop creating. Mm -hmm. Don't stop making the content. Don't stop making the art. Yeah, I love that. Even when it's like challenging, you still gotta you just got show to. up and still mm -hmm. work through it. Because that's sometimes when you're really best. Stop I'm coming saying. when you're dealing with the shit. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you're now with Nice Life, mm -hmm. right? And you were formerly with with RCA. Why does it make sense now to 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 come back into a a label situation? Well, Nice Life is a very unique label situation. I feel because um, they're not a major label. Mm -hmm. It's a much more intimate group of people. It's a more intimate relationship that I can have mm -hmm. with them. It's a conversation. We can, have, we can have real conversations and it's not, you know, clouded by just hundreds and thousands of people, thousands of, a lot of people being on the team. <laughs> um, it felt like thousands of people. Yeah. Um, so I think that this is, it's a really unique situation and that I can, build out my team and have um, more people working towards getting my art out there, but I don't feel like I'm sacrificing my creativity or my autonomy as an artist. Mm -hmm. And they really respect the work that I've made, which is like the biggest part of it. Yeah. You know, they're not they're not like, oh, I, we love it, but can you make something can more like this? this? Mm -hmm. Which is always like the catch. Yeah. You're Gotta right. look out for that. <laughs> we are huge fans. Can you actually make something totally different? <laughs> you know? You're like, that's not why I, I signed up for this. Yeah. Yeah. What, what? So as you think about that relationship and where you want to go as an artist, mm -hmm. uh, can you give us a, a glimpse of the future? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't I don't know. I think that's another thing that makes this unique and that I'm excited about is that I feel it's very real time right now. Like mm -hmm. I'm moving it. I'm operating in real time and I'm not necessarily 18 months out, 24 months yeah. out, like the art that I'm making now or like what I make tonight in the studio, like we could put that out, like who knows, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. just like whatever feels right and whatever feels um, the best yeah. is the direction that I plan to take. Mm. Because like I said, I'm just kind of like flowing. I'm just letting the universe kind of guide me. You're very present. Yeah. Mm. And I think that that is an exciting place to be because <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen no i think that's if you can get to a place like that then you know yeah, it, it like, really is I'm exciting i'm excited to see what will happen in the next six months we are too <laughs> <laughs> now we got some some fans here that hey, have been enjoying this chat <laughs> they have some questions so if it's okay with you yeah absolutely we're going to talk to some of the fans in the audience y'all make some noise <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go first question on the front row here. Introduce Hi. yourself and ask your question. <laughs> hey. How's it going? So excited to see you. Um, so my question is, um, what would you say to artists that are out now and overcoming hurdles, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to like, you? we already kind of spoke about it with the social media thing, but what do you do now with your wisdom mm -hmm. from the past? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that I, have taken away from like my whole entire experience in terms of wisdom is to have a bigger picture view of myself and my career. It's to zoom out and look at what I want to accomplish long term in terms of legacy. What do I really want to say um, 10, 20 years from now when I look back on what I'm doing now, will I be proud of it? As opposed to day to day, getting caught up in How's this post performing? How's this song doing? You know, whatever. I think it's important to look at the big picture and realize that all of the little pieces of everything that you go through in the day to day make up that big picture. So it's to focus on that instead of so much little things. <laughs> of course. Thank you for your question. I'm gonna go here next. Hey, hey. girl, I'm Meredith. Hi. <laughs> um, so you've been in the news talking about past collaborations. Mm -hmm. um, how does it feel to speak your truth only to have your words twisted sometimes? Um, I mean, I think it's not really surprising to me because the media is going to media and, you know, people are always going to kind of create their little sound bites and their clickbaits and then people are going to run with it. Um, it's... Yeah, I think the the best thing I could say is it's to be expected. 
And it's all about how you, your attitude in terms of how you, if you let it get to you or, you know, for me, it's about being able to just kind of take that experience, transmute it, move on. And I think that that's also a practice. Like you, it's not that easy always, <laughs> but the more that that happens to you, the more you get used to it. And you're like, oh, it's the media. <laughs> totally. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you for your question. We're going to go here next. Okay. Hello, hey. my name is Albert. First of all, I Albert. love you so much. Okay. Like, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an Aquarius too, so like Period. we get the vision. But uh, yeah, you get it. I wanted to ask you, like, how do you embody confidence before you go on stage, or just or just in general? Like, what do mm-hmm. you tell yourself? Mm-hmm. Um, I think I feel the most confident when I feel the most myself. So I try not to feel like I'm putting on any type of performance. Um, before I do a performance, which is kind of ironic. Yeah, I think I want people around me that I'm comfortable with. I want the environment to feel really comfortable. I don't want to feel like I am outside of my element. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think um, for me, yeah, a lot of that has to do with my circle and and making sure that I have like some some type of alone time before I go on stage, things like that. Mm, That's good. Period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to go to our last question over here. Hey. Hi. Okay. So one thing that really drawn me to you as an artist is I feel like you are just so creative and so out of the box. Yeah. Like, Thank um, you. There's a song you did with uh, FKA Twigs, and I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this <laughs> girl is just so unique. So I was just wondering, what is your creative process when yeah. you're coming up with these concepts? Um, I think what I like to do is I just like to play. So I think that gives me the opportunity to try anything, um, get in the studio and make something that sounds totally different than what I made last time I was in the studio or play with genres or play with new sounds. I think it's important to be able to try everything out and then you can kind of reel it back in. You can kind of decide once you've had the opportunity to experiment where you want to continue to delve in. Um, but yeah, it's important to just like have fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank y'all so much for your questions. Y'all make some noise for Tanasha. Yeah. Hold up. We actually got one more question. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm a big hey. fan. My name's Dana. Hey, I'm nice to meet you. Too. Period. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <I> just... <laughs> um, so you're going to go on tour soon, right? Yes. Um, w- you're excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what are you most excited about? Well, a new tour is always a new opportunity to kind of create a new show. So for me, this is just gets all the gears turning. There's so much that goes into a tour. Wardrobe, costumes, set design, um, sequencing, the music itself, who are your dancers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tacos. So I'm just like, tacos. <laughs> so I just get really excited when it comes to a new tour. And especially off the bat, I just released this new album. So fresh energy, brand new songs. All the things. So I'm just really excited to dig into it. We've started when it comes to the music. We're working on the set list and the music right now. We have a long way to go. Um, but yeah, it kind of all comes together. You, he asked me this before camera started rolling. <laughs> um, and I said it all comes together at the last minute. <laughs> because there's so much that goes into making a tour. So it's really fun to see it all fall into place. Totally. Thank y'all for the question. Thank you so much for your question. Tanache, thank you so much thank for joining you. us Thanks here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'll make some noise. We'll see you on tour. Thank you. See you guys <laughs> soon. All right. All right. <laughs>